Hello and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to our channel. For those of you who are coming back, I'm Lee and we are traveling expats or you might want to call us traveling foreigners, traveling tourists, or maybe some of you, vielleicht Reisende Ausländer. Some of you clearly had a uh, problem with our with our channel's name last week so uh, maybe we'll address how we came up with that at a later date and the people of Germany I apologize for my terrible um, use of the German language and I'll discuss that later all right so last week um, you know, I was out here in this forest and uh, I made a little video about the things that why we love Germany, why we like living there and why we think it's a fantastic place to live. And I said that, you know, I will probably come back next week and list some of the things we don't like about Germany because as nice as Germany is, it is in fact not perfect. Um, I really didn't think anybody would watch, to be quite honest with you, uh, but the response was overwhelming. Um, many people watched, many people commented, and um, yeah, I just want to thank you for watching that video and for all of your comments. Uh, the, most of the comments were overwhelmingly positive, and we, pre we really appreciate the, um, the nice sentiment from you. Um, uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, the, the Germans, uh, for those of you who are, who are from Germany uh, that watch the video and give us, you know, give us a, a nice comment. We really appreciate that. We do have, so we thought about it and, uh, you know, we talked about how much we really like living in Germany, the great things, some of the great things. Now, there's so many great things. I didn't come close to listening, listening to them all last week, but I sat down, you know, what do I not like about Germany? And, you know, obviously there are some things. It took a while to come up with this list, but um, I started out, Betty and I, we listed, we started out, we said, okay, let's list five things. And it took us a while to list five things, really. Um, but we came up with five. Probably most of them won't be of any surprise to, um, to Germans or to foreigners who've lived in Germany or visited Germany. So there probably won't be a big surprise. But then the more I thought of it, I came up with a sixth one. And I think the sixth one might actually surprise a lot of people, right? So without further ado, let's go to the list. All right, so number one, and this will not be a surprise to anyone, but the number one thing that uh, irritates us in Germany is bureaucracy. Um, you know, uh, when we were de dealing with such organizations as the Ausländerbehörde or registering with our city, uh, getting uh, health insurance, all this type of stuff, it was really overwhelming. And so you have to get so much paperwork, put all this stuff together, and most of the time you had to mail it in or, and this really blew me away, fax it in. I could not believe that the German government and so many of these government offices were still using fax machines as recently as 2021, 2022. Now I understand that I guess there is a push and, and the German government is going to eliminate fax machines in the next year, couple of years or so. But yeah, so as recently as 2021, 2022, still using fax machines. Um, so, it, you know, so either you fax it or you mail it in and you just kind of mail it in and and you hope it gets to where you send it now with that being said i must say the german postal system is amazingly efficient it always impressed me when i would mail something it seemed like it got to wherever i was sending it to sometimes the very next day or sometimes just two days later so the german mail system is an incredibly efficient running machine so i'll give you that but the, the amount of paperwork you have to get the number of signatures you have to have to acquire uh, it was quite daunting and every time i would go to the uh, for example every time i'd go to the Auslander um 
I would be so nervous because I would just be like, oh, do I have everything? I would double check, you know, two, three, four, five times I would check to make sure I had everything because if you got there, because, well, at least I was afraid, if I got there and was missing something, then they would turn me away and I'd have to make another appointment, which, you know, might take another six weeks, another two months or so, because uh, it was very difficult to make make these appointments with with some of these offices and uh so yeah so so bureaucracy and you know I, i'm sure that doesn't surprise anyone um i think maybe it's getting better but um it was pretty um pretty intimidating the, the level of bureaucracy and paperwork um and the not use of email the fact that you actually had to print paper out and send it in okay bureaucracy that's one number two um, slow or non-existent internet and cell service. Uh, Germany really seems to be uh, behind much of the rest of the world when it comes to um, high-speed internet and cellular service. And I'm not just comparing it to the United States. I'm comparing it to other countries in Europe. Um, you know, for example, when I visit um, Poland, um, I was in Poland a couple years ago, and everywhere I went, I had great cellular service on my phone. Uh, great uh, internet, uh, very fast Wi-Fi. Um, same thing in, in Bulgaria, you know, and, and honestly, you know, you, we, we tend to think of Germany as a super efficient, super highly technological technologically advanced country, but some of these other places, Bulgaria, Poland, that you don't tend to think about that. Uh, and I apologize to the people of Poland and Bulgaria if you're watching this, but um, I was very impressed with your internet service and cell, and cell service. And in Germany, it really seems to be kind of hit and miss. And it's not just in the rural areas. Some of the major cities, um, you might have great cell service at one point, and then you walk 50 meters away and you you have no service at all and uh where i worked at we basically had two buildings that were right across the street from each other and one of the buildings uh, i had cell service and then if i went to the other building i had absolutely nothing and it was just kind of crazy so it seems to be very hit and miss okay so number three on our list and again, I don't think this will surprise anyone, but number three on our list is the German language. I do not have a talent for languages, uh, especially the German language. I mean, I have spent countless hours, you know, thousands of dollars on courses. I've worked with private tutors, I've taken classes, both in-person classes, online classes. I worked, you know, with, you know, multiple different resources. I can communicate, I can get by, I can understand in most situations what's going on. It is just um, difficult. I have certain, it's not from a lack of effort. I promise you that. Um, but yeah, I just don't have a talent for it now. Um, like I said, you know, I've lived for five years. I live next door to a wonderful German family um, who did not speak English. So we always spoke German together. And uh, you know, we had a great time. I loved hanging out with them. I'm really very shy about it and very embarrassed to speak. But you know, like I said, I can't communicate. I can understand in almost all situations. Now, sometimes it gets too advanced, honestly, and it's difficult. I haven't given up. Uh, I still study every day. You know, even when I'm in the United States, I, you know, I spend at least, at least 10, 15 minutes every day, most of the time more, uh, studying German, trying to speak a little German, listening to German. We'll see how it goes. Maybe someday I will um, conquer that beautiful German language. We'll see. Okay, so we are at number four, I think. So the fourth thing that uh, really irritates us about life in Germany um, or, the, or the lack of or the uh, public restrooms. Now, this, uh, a little bit of this is a 
kind of a, a double-edged sword. But um, so in the United States, typically um, any public building you go to, whether it's like a, a public, um, just a public building or if it's a store or something like that, or maybe a government building or a store, pretty much every public place you go to is going to have an easily identifiable and readily available bathroom, restroom, someplace you can go to relieve yourself. And in Germany, I find that not to be the case. You know, um, a lot of stores, if they have a bathroom, it's not, it's certainly not uh, advertised. It's not uh, readily available. And then um, a lot of the bathrooms, I would say most of the restrooms, if they are there, you have to pay to use them. Now, I think that's uh, legally, I think they can't require you to pay, but you know, if they have a thing there, who's going to jump the turnstile to get to the bathroom? So I cannot tell you the number of times that um, I've been driving along and, uh, and, uh, you know, so driving along the Autobahn and, you know, you've really got to go, you pull over and you get out and you go inside and there's the thing and you had to put a coin in either, uh, uh, an oil coin or a 50 cent piece or something like that. And you don't have change. And so in, even as long as I've lived in Germany, I still don't always carry change with me, believe it or not. I know that's that's incredibly hard to believe. You would think I'd learned by now, but I don't always have a coin. So I run back out to my car, I'm digging for coins, um, or I go buy something to get change. And uh, so sometimes it's very difficult and it's uh, very um, um, urgent, shall we, shall we say, to, to find a coin. Now, some of the places have installed like credit card readers, so you can put your credit card there and go through. Um, and some of the places still are like old school where they just have like a lady who cleans the bathrooms and uh, you just give her a coin and go in and use the restroom. Now, um, the good side of this, and I would say, um, you know, th there is a good side of this is that most of the time when you use a public restroom in Germany, it's clean, right? And so some of them in the United States are really dirty and you're kind of like, you're really careful about what you touch when you go inside there. I mean, they're free, but they ain't nobody cleaning them very often, I tell you that. Whereas in Germany, typically they are very clean, so that's nice. And I don't mind paying 50 cents. I don't even mind paying a euro to use the restroom because most of the time when you pay, uh, especially if you stop along the Autobahn, you get a little coupon and you know, and so you get your money back. Um, you buy something and you're able to use that coupon to get money off of it. So I don't mind doing it at all. Um, it's just, I guess it's more of a complaint on myself is that I don't always remember um, to take change with me when I go to use the restroom. And I guess, you know, maybe someday I'll learn, right? So there we go. So there's, there's the restroom. And now, so the fifth thing, and what I thought was going to be the final thing, the fifth thing is, um, smoking. And I don't mind that people smoke. I really don't care. Uh, if you want to smoke that, that you're right and go ahead and, and, and smoke it up, you know, with the, with the health consequences, but I'm not a smoker and I find myself constantly being exposed to secondhand smoke when I'm in Germany. And one of the first things that always kind of hits me when I land in Germany, when, when I, when I, you know, come from, you know, say the U S or somewhere and I get in Germany, I land in Germany at the airport, I get off the plane, I walk outside and almost immediately I'm hit. I walk into a wall of secondhand smoke and like, yep, back in Germany. Right? So it just seems like I don't know if there are really many more smokers in Germany than there are in the United States. I'm not sure what the numbers are, uh, but in the U.S., smokers or smoking areas are much more segregated from the general non-smokers. So I, I really can't remember the last time in the U.S. that I've sm smelled secondhand smoke, to be quite honest with you, because it's kind of inconvenient. If you want to smoke in the U.S., um, you're definitely going to be inconvenienced because the smoking areas are isolated and they're pretty far away from, from general public areas. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, like my fifth thing. 
secondhand smoke. Um, I just, I don't, you know, I've never been a smoker and I just don't like to, to smell smoke, but that's, but that's one of those things you have to deal with, with life in Germany and in Europe overall, actually, it's just, uh, there's much more secondhand smoke than you find in the United States. Um, so those are the five things. So as we were making this list and coming up with the things that, you know, that we don't like or, or things that frustrate us about life in Germany, we realized that. There's also a sixth thing, um, a relatively new thing that uh, we don't like about Germany. And, you know, this is going to sound, will probably sound pretty strange coming from an American and especially after the things that I've just discussed. Um, but the sixth thing that we don't like about Germany is how it's becoming more and more like the United States. And this is a pretty interesting topic, I think. So I'm going to save, I'm going to make a show about this next week. So tune in next week and I'm going to discuss how over the last 30 years that we've observed Germany uh, becoming more like, like the U.S. And um, which I think is not necessarily a good thing. So join us next week and we'll discuss that. So thanks for coming along and listening to me talk this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it interesting. And let us know in the comments what you think. Am I right about this? Or am I just, uh, you know, full of, uh, of BS or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, so yeah, so let us know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.